Hey guys, it's Allie, and this is the YNR Chat Vlog for Wednesday, July 23rd, and what the hell is Sudden Impact? Apparently, on Friday, there will be a Sudden Impact. What's it gonna be? They're hyping it up on every single show. Whatever it is, it's gonna be huge. I'm sure you guys, you guys probably already know what it is, or if you don't, you have your own theories. I know I have my theory. You wanna hear it? I think I heard a yes. I have a theory that Sudden Impact is going to be a comet. A comet is going to come flaming from the sky and it's going to land and crash down onto Genoa City with an impact of suddenness. Yes, that's my theory. And I'm hoping that the comet will land squarely on the head of David Chow. Or should I say... Angelo Serafini. Okay, so so we learned this week Paul discovered a picture on the internet. Like he did a Google search on Jupiter or something and <laughs> found uh found a picture of David Chow um and discovered that his real name is Angelo Serafini. I think I'm saying that last name right. Um my first thought when when we when we discovered that was um, if David Chow had a picture out there, out there of him that was so easy to find, you'd think that, you know, you'd think he would have covered it up a little bit by now. I mean, he did such a good job of covering up Jimin's murder for so long, and now he just, like, you can, in the t you do a Google, a Google search, and in the top ten results is, is a picture of him. You'd think he maybe would have done something about that by now, but, uh, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, apparently, also on a side note, we've learned that Jimin was somehow involved. He's somehow crooked and part of this mob group. I really have not figured out what's going on there. The pieces have not started to connect for me yet. I don't know if it's just me. Maybe I'm slow. Or maybe Sudden Impact will give us um, some more details on like what the connections are there. I still feel really unresolved about Jimin and why, and now we know he's connected, and I don't know how. I guess the thing that's really nagging on me is that I know that there is still a hit out there that they want David to perform. And my question is, who's it going to be on? Like, it's got to be somebody in Genoa City. Um, at first I was thinking that maybe it would be Gloria, but now I don't know. Um, also, maybe Paul? I don't know. I mean, Paul's getting pretty close to the truth. Um, we had a detect. One of the detectives kind of warned Paul to be careful with this case because he could, you know, it's there is it's as serious as it could possibly get. So it could, could be Paul, or it could be Nikki. I don't know. Um, but I feel like somebody is gonna get killed or gonna almost get killed or something. But okay, let's put that aside because the major news here for me is that finally, finally. Nikki walked away from David. I mean, <laughs> it was so long overdue. I, Nikki, he didn't even give you his real name. And, and honestly, I really thought that she was going to start to rationalize again. As she confronted him about who Angela was, I, I could see him talking his way out of it. And I, really, and I could see her kind of backing down. And I was extremely concerned that she was going to give in again. Um, and it just bugs me. I feel like in the past several months, Nikki has become this weak and gullible woman, and I don't like it. Um, I, I, I hate it, actually. It really bothers me to see Nikki so, um, I don't know, just being played by this guy, and I, I don't like what David Chow has turned her into. So I am so glad, so glad that she finally has decided that this is the last straw with David. She is leaving him. I don't, I don't even know why she's giving him the benefit of the doubt uh, to go to the gala with him. I mean, I, I think that David knew. I think David has something up his sleeve, and it wasn't until David said, "Well, if we go to the gala, Victor will know," or if we don't go to the gala together, Victor will know that we broke up. And that seemed to hit a chord with Nikki. And I think David knew that he was hitting that chord with Nikki. So he has something going on. He's just trying to buy another couple of days till he can get his hands on her money or something. I don't know. But um, yeah, so Nikki finally uh, decided to ditch him. But my concern, and I think 
this is going to be true, is that it's going to be too late. Something is going to happen, and I think this sudden impact thing um, does somehow revolve around Nikki and David and Paul and all of that. I listened, I, I went and like re-watched that sudden impact video a couple of times, and a lot of the quotes, like they had, you know, a series of scenes, like visual video scenes, and then they had, you know, like voiceovers, and a lot of like the voiceovers were things that had been said throughout the week, like things that have already been said already, so I have no guess. I have no frame of reference other than the comment for what this sudden impact thing is going to be, but I have a feeling that the David thing is going to come to a head very soon. Yay. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to change topics completely, totally, because I, it's that's such a bummer. Let's talk about something happy. Um, so Kane and Lily are shacking up. And Cain is going to ask Lily to marry him. Um, so cool. I really, really loved the ring, for one thing. I loved that he, that they went house shopping together. Um, I, I kind of wish he would have, like, waited for Lily to buy the house rather than just assuming that it was going to be what she wanted, but whatever. Um, yeah, basically... Lily is a very, very lucky girl, um, because Kane is, he's smoking. I have to say, he's probably, uh, yeah, I think he's probably the most, one of the most, if not the most attractive guys on the show, for sure. He's, I call him the beefcake, because he's just full of beefy cakeness. I just, well, oh, he's, he's good looking. Um, but also so sweet. I really liked how he went to Neil to ask Neil's permission to, to ask Lily to marry him. And I just thought that was so cute and old fashioned, especially since Neil's an old fashioned guy. And so Kane kind of knew it and he decided to, to ask his permission. My dad, if, if a guy came to my dad, I'm not married. So if a guy came to my dad and asked him to marry me, I, my dad would be like, Meh. Or he'd be like, what? <laughs> I don't even think my dad would look up from his beer. I think he would be more annoyed that he had to actually speak with the guy. Um, but anyway, it was really cute for uh, for Kane and Lily. I quite appreciated that. And now that they're going to get engaged and they have this house together, I'm hoping that it sort of calms them down and has, you know, kind of allows them to realize how strong their relationship is, despite whatever Chloe's going to do. We still, we've been, we haven't heard very much about the baby situation in a couple of days, so don't totally know where that is going, but we shall see. Um, Chloe is off at Restless Style now, so she can torture a whole new set of people. Um, and I think uh, first on that list is going to be Daniel. Um, she has decided that she's going to play rematch maker, and she's going to try to get Amber and Daniel back together, which for what it's worth, I appreciate. Thank you, Chloe, for trying to get Amber and Daniel back together. However, I don't trust that girl any further than I could throw her, except I, I would really relish the opportunity to throw her rather far. But I don't trust her, and I don't think Amber should trust her. Knowing Chloe, she'll set out to try to get them together or make it seem like she's trying to get them back together, and she'll seduce Daniel for herself. I would not be surprised if that is where this is heading. Um, yeah, so Amber and Chloe seeming like they're friends, but you know what, Amber? With friends like Chloe, you don't need any enemies. Um, so anyway, <laughs> end rant. Um, I'm kind of hyper today. It's because I had, I got a big gulp <laughs> from the store. So I, I drank like 44 ounces of Dr. Pepper, so I'm really jazzed. Um, anyway, there are also a couple of smaller storylines that are going on. Just kind of wanted to barely mention. Um, number one, Gloria and Jeff. And the big question right now is who has that face cream? Jeff went to Korea. The girlfriend didn't have it. We don't know where it is. So no idea how that's going to pan out. And I'm trying to ask myself, who would want that face cream to be able to use it against Gloria? Um, and really the only person that comes to mind is Jill. Um, so I don't know. Does Jill have it? Is there some way she may have swindled it away from the girlfriend? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, because Jill has her, her hands full, uh, swindling. Uh, she has decided that she is going to form an alliance with Brad, and they are going to, I don't know, try to seize control of Jabot and Chancellor, which is very interesting. I think they're a really good pair because they both, I think, just want power. Um, they have <clears throat> mutual 
uh, mutual uh, goals. But uh, I got be careful, Jill. Jill, you got to be careful. Anybody getting involved with Brad? I just think that guy is out for himself, and um, I don't know. I think it's pretty dangerous for for Jill to even be getting involved with him. And maybe likewise, who knows? Jill might be able to do some damage on Brad too. Um, but apparently, step one of the Jabot Chancellor coup is to get David Chow out of the company. So Brad has divulged the information to Jill that David has a gambling problem, and now they're pulling his phone records. Jill called his bookie, which um, I don't know. We'll see how that uh, we'll see how that pans out. For, for one thing, I don't know why they need a lawyer to start pulling David Chow's phone records. Like they they call Heather as if it's you know something legal. They're like whatever, pull the phone records. Look at his stuff. Who cares? Um, but you know. <laughs> David's going down and out one way or the other. It just depends on what happens first. So, okay, because YouTube has this evil 10-minute time limit for posting for video length, um, I'm going to cut this off and call it part one. But come back. Stay with me. I'm going to do a part two, and I have some things I need to say. So um, I'm actually going to kind of gripe a little bit. So you're going to want to hear this. Trust me. So stick around. Um, I'll be right back.